this is my brand new 2023 Mako 18 LTS. Love the boat, but there are no rod holders in the back two corners. This is the back corner of the boat. The motor's right over here. And I want to be able to put a rod out the back for uh, putting a bait out the back or for trolling. No flush mount rod holders here, so that's what we're going to install today. Just got these flush mount rod holders off of uh, Amazon. You can just find anything stainless steel that you want to use. It came with the screws, actually. Uh, we've got the Marine 5200 sealant. I'm not going to be taking these off, so this will work out just fine. Got my hole saw and have the arbor for the hole saw. You just want the hole saw to be slightly bigger than the diameter of the rod, uh, the rod tube that you're putting in. Got my drill, so let's get down to business. I watched a couple videos on YouTube about this, so that pretty much makes me an expert on the subject. Jokes. <laughs> uh, I've seen people do it a hard way. I've seen people do it the easy way, so I'm going to go with what I think makes the most sense. and Let's see what happens, and maybe you can learn something. You're going to learn something from my mistake or my success, but either way, it's going to be good for you. So before we get into it, let me just kind of show you this setup on the boat here. So I've got two rod holders underneath either side in the gunnels there. You can see the entrance of it right there. I've got three on each side on the center console for a total of six there. So that's 10, but there's nothing else. There's no flush mount rod holders anywhere else on this boat, nowhere else. And so I'm just going to put one in each corner right here, angling out in either direction. And these are 15 degree rod holders. You can buy them straight up and down. You can buy them 15 degree or 30 degree. I didn't need as much of an angle as 30, but I thought 15 would be just perfect to kind of angle them away from the boat. Now, one of the first things I want to do before I cut into here is take a look at where I want to put the rod holder at. And then I got to take a look underneath the boat to see if there's any wires or anything underneath there that might get in the way. Because you don't want to start cutting holes on the top if it's going to interfere or pierce into something valuable on the bottom. So let's kind of take a look underneath and get a plan on where exactly we can put these. Okay, so we're looking inside this compartment right here. What you're seeing over here is actually the back of the boat. That is the transom. But what you're seeing here is actually not the side of the boat. This is actually just the interior wall of the storage compartment that, that I have the camera in. Over this ledge where you see this wire going, there is... Uh, probably about a little less than a foot of space that goes to the actual edge of the boat on the other side of this wall. This cord, this electric cord, goes over to the light, the rear light uh, that you'll see from the top side of the boat. Now I'm thinking I want to go over this and drill in behind this because I want that rod holder as close to the back edge of the boat as I can possibly get it. I think that'll be best for my fishing needs. I can always put it up here, drill in this area if I need to, but I'm gonna see if I can put it over here. So I'm gonna take a closer look at what's over this wall. Okay, so an executive decision is being made here because of this place where I can put in the back light. And there is a wall right here. The interior bin of this storage compartment has a wall right here. I was thinking about putting the rod holder right there. The only problem is, the rod holder is going to be angled like that. And so that rod tube is going to be knocking right into that wall or very close to it. So I made an executive decision. We're actually going to slide it over some somewhere in, in this area. Uh, that way there is plenty of space. If we look at plenty of space for this rod tube to angle out this direction and it's not going to hit anything important. If I tried to go over there, that it's going to hit this piece right here. Now on the other side of the boat, I'll show you on this side, we don't have that light, so we can probably try to put it in the corner like we want to, but that might look funny because they're not going to match. So maybe what I'll have to do is put them both in about the same place. That way it doesn't look crazy because you know, it's a new boat, so we don't want it to look too crazy. I can reach underneath and feel the screw into that hinge and about a half an inch over from where I feel that screw coming from that hinge is that barrier wall. So I know if I line up the edge of my rod tube with the hinge, then I will be fine. So what I did is I just took a level, I just lined it up, and I'm gonna run me a piece. I probably should be using blue masking tape. I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use black electrical tape. But I'll run me a piece of tape this way, and then I know that that's as far over as where the rod tube can go and then I'll just measure it 
and then do the same thing on the other side. Then we just gotta decide where we're gonna put it this direction. All right, so I've got my tape laid down. So I know that right on this side is that barrier wall that I can't touch. So I can drill the hole and as long as the hole does not come over this edge of the tape, then we're fine. I was trying to decide which direction I'm gonna put it this way. So after doing some measuring, this little uh, light bracket here is about one and five eighths away from this back edge right here, this line. When you measure it, it's one and five eighths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna line it up with the back of that. All right, so as you're supposed to do, you're supposed to measure multiple, multiple, multiple times. So that way you're only drilling once and cutting a hole once. So I've measured how far I can go this way. I've measured where the end of the transom is this way. And what I've done, you probably can't see it because I've only got black electrical tape, but I put up a, a black dot here where I'm gonna start my drill bit because you have a drill hole we're gonna start before we cut all the way. I measured one inch from the side because it is a two inch tube. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just get the hole started. <sighs> Pardon me while I go inside and cry. <laughs> now in case you're wondering, you have this base piece that you need to buy. You can't just buy the whole saw. You have to have this piece right here. And then what happens is this is threaded. So you're going to, it's spring loaded. So you pull this down and then you're going to go ahead and thread this on and then push that back up until it, uh, it'll snap in. To one of those to one of those mini holes that you see there so make sure it's drilled uh, screwed in make sure it's snapped in before you start using it now here's the important part we've got the hole started now we're going to actually put this in and get the angle like we want and the way you do that is you take your rod holder and you you have it like the way that you want to do it where it would be normally sitting in so we're just going to turn this upside down A new boat. <laughs> like a glove. So now we got to screw it in. So the stainless steel screws came with this kit. Uh, I think those are like one and a half inch number 12, I think, stainless screws. Three holes there. You can use you a black magic marker. Set this in where it's going to go. Get it lined up exactly like you want, although the hole you cut at an angle should take care of that for you. Just use this black magic marker to mark the three holes where the screws are going to be. And then you want to dig a drill, a pallet hole, okay? So take a drill bit that's slightly smaller than this, drill a pallet hole, that way it doesn't crack your fiberglass. You can see here that if I wanted that screw to bite down almost all the way through that fiberglass, it needs to be about twice as long, okay? So even though these screws came with the kit, I'm going to go ahead and go to the hardware store and get the same, uh, about the same size except about twice as long. And I want to do one that has an angled head instead of a flat because these holes here are angled instead of flat. So sometimes the screws that come with the product aren't necessarily the best thing for the job. So that's going to be about all we can do tonight. And we'll have to finish up tomorrow after we get the right screws. So here we are day two working on the boat again. It shouldn't have took two days, but Always make sure you have the right stuff. I did pick up some masking tape. Didn't have to have it. My electrical tape would have worked, but this is a little a bit easier to draw on. And the screws that came with the rod holder were not right. They were too short. So I ended up going and getting uh, uh, one and a half inch long number 12s with, as you can see, that angled head, which will sit a little better into that angled hole. So what I did was, and this is always recommended, take your rod holder to the hardware store that way you can take the screw. And I actually had the luxury of cutting out a piece already uh, from the boat. And look, when you line that up, see that? That's perfect. It goes just about all the way through. You don't, for me, you don't want a screw to go all the way through because any screw that's sticking out below the fiberglass, 
is likely to get caught on something, electrical wire, fuel wire, your hand. So this way it's gonna barely go through, which is gonna hold just perfect. All right, so now we can start screwing this in. But before we screw this in, I've already drilled this hole. I'm gonna use this hole to take some measurements to know where to drill the hole on the other side. Now what I did is I took my measuring tape and I measured, you know, from the sides here and here and from the top and bottom and I got measurements of where this hole is at and then what I did is I came over on this side and I took a black magic marker and I did the same thing I just measured in from the sides measured in from the top and I have the dead center of where the hole needs to be now the best way to do this is probably to put down masking tape and to do your drawings on the masking tape so if you screwed up you can pull the masking tape off and you have it drawn on your boat so in hindsight, that's probably what I should do. But thank goodness I measured correctly and this is accurate. So when I drill the hole and put the piece over it, you will not see the black marker. But I would do this on masking tape. So if you do screw up, you didn't just draw on your brand new boat. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get the hole started on this side. But it's not just the hole that I got to get right. I also got to get the angle correct as well. Because remember, I have this one angled a certain direction. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the hole started so I get the circle uh, right. And then I'm going to measure out where I need the screw holes to be, which will help me get an identical angle on this side that I have on this side over here. So what I'm going to do, simply get that hole started a little bit right on top I'm gonna do a little bit better because I want to be able to see that perfect so now I can see the circle and then I can uh, now put, do some measurements and get my screw holes where they need to be to help me get the angle right all right here's my logic on how I'm going to do this this first screw hole right here is pretty much level with the bottom of the actual uh, the actual hole that the rod tube goes in. When you look at it, there's the screw hole, there's the bottom of the hole that the rod tube is going in. It's about level when you look at it. So what I did was I measured from the screw to the outside edge of this piece right here, and it's nine and three quarter inches. So I'm gonna take my masking tape because I think that's a smarter move. I'm going to put a piece of masking tape down right here, get level with the bottom of the hole that I've started, and figure out nine and three quarter inches from this side over to be able to put that screw hole identical to where the other one is, and that should give me the exact same angle on both rod holders. All right, so I've measured nine and three quarter inches from the outside. I've got the hole lined up just below, so that's where the hole will be and that'll help me be able to set this thing down here and know the angle that I need to be at. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and drill my pilot hole right here. If I did this this way, using that screw hole that I just said I used as a reference point based on the screw hole on the other side and line it up like this, it's angling the wrong direction. If I screwed the hole, the hole this way, then the rod tube is gonna be angling back towards the inside of the boat and not to the outside. So actually, I need to reverse it like that. But how do I reverse it you, just as my, as my guide, okay? How do I reverse it and get it right? Well, here's what I did. I took a second piece of masking tape right here. So I had the screw hole, and I know this is where the screw hole needs to be, because when it goes in the correct way, that's gonna be perfect. But to, to reverse it, to create my guide for the angle that I create my hole for the rod tube, how do I do that? Well, what I did was I took another piece of masking tape on the other side, and I'm gonna use a level, okay? So I'm lining up the level with the center hole where, the, where my hole is gonna be cut, okay? And I'm gonna line that up with the pilot hole that I've made for my screw, just like this, okay? Then what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to line up where this screw is, where, the, where this pilot hole is in relation to the bottom of the hole here. Okay, so it's pretty much level, as I said before. So I'm going to come over here and get that pretty much level. Make another line. Boom. 
And now I know where that intersects right there, that little X is where I'm where the top of this needs to be, just like that. So I can line that up and then make sure that, that the hole is lined up with the hole right here. So this hole lined up with this hole like that. And then I need to make sure that this hole right here is lined up with the mark that we just that we just made, okay? Okay. There's my guide. The other thing too is there is I want to show you this. See that little cross piece in the middle of that? Okay. I can also line that up with that little cross line that I created right there to make sure that as I'm looking down across this, it's lining up as I cut my hole. Now, I did this just to weigh it down. We can turn it, boom, and it lines up with my pilot hole exactly like the angle on the other side. So now, let's create the pilot holes here and attach these in. Okay, so I found the perfect size drill bit to do these pilot holes. I created the pilot holes with a smaller bit initially just to mark them. But every time I tried to hand tighten the screw in there, I mean, it was just way too tight and you can hear it cracking the fiberglass. So finally, I just kept stepping up in size till I got a, this is a 3 16th if my measurements are right on my bits. This is a 3 16th bit and that made a pilot hole just right to where I can screw it in it's snug, but it's not cracking the fiberglass. So I'm going to go ahead and get my first one started, get that attached, and then I can start putting in the other ones. Now here's where my Marine 5200 comes into play. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a generous helping of it around the base of the rod tube. Okay, I want to get some on the actual rod tube itself where it's going to be in the fiberglass. And then I want a lot of it on this underside here. It's going to smash down and, and create a nice seal, but I would like to have some of it on the base of the rod tube as well so that it actually ends up going inside this hole a little more, thus securing it even better and waterproofing it even better. Okay, got the 5200 where I want, a little bit around the base, a little bit there, so we're going to go ahead and flip it upside down and carefully install that into place. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to take a little 5200 and put it in the first screw hole here. And now we're going to go ahead and get that screw go. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it on down. Now, honestly, that went in pretty easy, as you noticed, uh, with the 3 16th drill bit. Um, and I guess the 5200 created a lubricant, and that went in a heck of a lot easier with the 5200, I guess, lubricating it than without. So I think actually this is why I did just one pilot hole with the 3 16 because it seemed like it was the perfect uh, width and it seemed like the screw went in with tension but yet not too much tension. But with that 5200 lubricating it, it went right in pretty easy. So for the other pilot holes, I'm probably going to go with something a little smaller than the 3 16 so that screw will be a little bit tighter in there. Okay, I just finished drilling this second pilot hole with a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the, uh, the, the other one that I had. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the process again. We're gonna put a little 5200 in that hole. See how snug that ends up being. And you can feel that biting the fiberglass pretty good. So that's probably gonna be the right size. Not exactly sure what size that is, but I think it's gonna be the right size. Yeah. Yeah, that's going in nice. It's taking pressure to put it in, but it's not just sliding in as easy as this first one, so I think that's gonna be the perfect size. Nice, beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna drill this other one out. It's tight, but once it starts going though, like once you get it started, threads kind of help you. You could use a drill to do this if you wanted to, for once you got it started. Um, I'm just using my hand right now because I like the fact that I can feel everything. See, it's going in pretty nice now. First couple turns, a little bit tough just to get it started, but then the threads actually start helping you at that point. And there you go. Nice and snug. 
And as you can see, you've got a little bit of 5200 kind of seeped around the edges. That'll help waterproof it. We've got 5200 underneath. So we'll just let that dry. That'll be good to go. So now we'll do the other side. So there you go. We've got the two rod holders attached, angling out at perfect angles going that way off of the back of the boat. And then we're here we have this one on this side, angling right off the back of the boat, 15 degrees. So really excited. All in all, really happy, learned a few things, and I hope that uh, this was a good video for you guys. I hope you picked up some tips that'll help you maybe not to make the mistakes I did uh, and go a little faster with what I showed you in this video.